Fate was supposed to give the introduction, but it seems that she's not around. I think that Brian will still continue looking for her and find her. So, Dr. Shekboy is the executive director of Stats International in Washington, adjunct professor at the Michigan State. University, uh, the forestry and coordinating the lead authors of IPCC. He has been a senior scientist at the World Agroforestry Center, ICLAF, and served in scientific committees such as the Global Land Project uh, from 2004 to 2010 at IGBP from 2012 and uh, 2014. Welcome back, Fatim. And future health from uh, 2013 to 2015. So, Dr. Ball works on research and capacity buildings on land resource management in developing countries. So, today, the title of the, his talk is Will Africa Meet or Miss the Sustainable Development Goals? So, uh, I think that if there is something I missed, I will give the opportunity to Dr. Boyd to continue with the presentation and uh, other things. So, Doctor, thank you very much and welcome again. Um, before I start, I have to tell you that I came from Latin America yesterday with a very serious flu. So, my voice is not uh, as it should be, and I might interrupt sometimes, you know, just coughing, etc. So, I excuse myself if those things happen because of this very bad flu which I had. But I decided to continue doing this webinar because of its importance. Um, I was the one who was pushing so much on the early career scientists on earth system sustainability in the future earth community. the food, energy, water, nexus, and many other things that is relevant um, for the next generation. So today, uh, what I'm going to talk about is the issue in Africa. We have an agenda for 2030, and 2030 is just 12 years ahead of us, actually 11 years. 11 years for Africa means 11 rainy season, 11 growing season. It's too short for the ambition, I think, we have for the SDGs to be, to be rich. And we have to think creatively how in the next 11 years we create the deep transformation 
which is required to to have zero hunger, to have health for all, to, to manage resources in land, to manage all the 17 goals in one. So it's a really big challenge, and I want to go through with you as an early career scientist on few of the challenges that you may take on your plate as a way to do actions and help leapfrog the process of sustainable development in Africa. So the title of my presentation is, can we really meet of, uh, the SDGs or do we, do, we, do we have worries that we will miss the SDGs? And I will tell you why this question was asked as a title of this presentation. So along this presentation, not in order, um, I will talk about issues related to the baseline. So when you talk about SDGs, I realize um, that countries do not come from the same baseline. Um, think about Malawi or Senegal, um, you know, trying to reach zero hunger as compared uh, to France and Germany. So the baseline is not the same, and that's one level of challenge, and we're going to talk about that. Um, we we're going to talk about, a, a, you know, a wealth of different other challenges related to governance, related to funding of research, uh, to create the transformation. And another level of challenge is the diversity and the plurality of global transformation, which are discussed at high level, and yet they want people to address the goals at local level without creating an iteration, uh, a kind of combined uh, rhetoric between the high level and the local level. And that's really one thing which is very, very important. The fourth level of challenge is the issue of which, which angle to, 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 to get this thing done. What's the prongs of attack? Where to start? What is the entry point? It's really challenging because the diversity of problems are so high that knowing exactly where to activate uh, transformation and start activating transformation might be uh, one of the big challenges we have. And then, uh, looking the way forward for 11 years, what needs to be done? How can we create transformation to reach um, the, the SDGs? These are really some of the key questions we have in this presentation, and, and, I, will, and I will take you through those points. And first of all, when you see the documents um, related to Africa, um, most of them take Africa as one piece. Uh, you know, Sub-Saharan Africa, they put everything inside. But Africa is such a huge continent. You can accommodate almost 11 big countries of the world uh, and then have some pocket left. And the diversity within the continent is so high. The diversity in terms of cultural values, diversity in terms of ecosystem, in terms of development, etc. So having one solution that fits all countries is just impossible. So we need to go by case-to-case -case basis, the context-specific solutions to make sure that what we are doing has some impact on the ground. But coming back to the facts, what do we know about Africa? Is that it's a very populated continent, 13% or 14% of the world population. But in terms of research, Africa accounts just 1% of the world researchers, 1% of the research output, a tiny bit of global patents, and the money which is invested to, to research is just meaningless. And at the same time, the pledge to invest 1% of the GDP to research and development has not gone very far. So just to think about doing science to create transformation as a way forward, uh, we, we have a baseline which is just too low. We don't invest much on research. And most of this investment, as you all know, uh, my colleagues, is this investment comes from developed, from developed countries, does not come from our countries. Um, there is a little bit of improvement in the recent years, uh, but altogether, uh, we all get our resource funding from our side, and that does not create the rapid deep transformation we want to we want to move we want to take and move forward for the continent. One of the level of challenge here, uh, level of challenge number one, is that these goals are negotiated globally, and people want to apply those and act locally. I think there is a tension here. When these people negotiate, yeah, they think about the population. But without, you know, having a bottom-up bottom up approach, I suspect that this high-level discussion remains intellectual ones, as it was in the in the MDGs. Um, it's a picture perfect um, aims, uh, intellectually, you know, sound. But when it comes to the ground, people do not know. Actually, 
the SDGs has gone for three years. And if you go to the villages, nobody knows about SDGs. That's the problem. If you go to any village in Africa or even small towns and you talk about SDGs, people might not know. And the success or failure of SDGs um, remain tightly linked with the engagement of community and people on the ground to, to, to develop action, to create transformation and to reach the goal for. So level challenge number one is at high level discussions, but low uh, implication, low, low engagement of communities on, on the goals. Level challenge two. Level challenge two came from our cross world conference in Bonn, where we were thinking about the diversity of aspirations, the diversity of uh, goals uh, that local communities can have. And as we were discussing, we asked a, a, an artist to, to really pitch the messages on a wall. And what comes out is this picture you see. Um, so many different interests, so many different aspirations, so many scenarios, so many urgency level, um, so many issues of equity, et cetera, et cetera, uh, and governance discrepancies that the ambition to reach uh, the goals in 2011, in 20, 20, 30, in 11 years, will define to a great deal of reorganizing ourselves and trying to really have a genuine approach, uh, you know, a really clear pathway through which we, we have to, uh, to, to address the SDGs. So we are dealing, we are dealing with the condom. One thing is to have the SDGs, the other thing is to, leave the, to, to, to see the social economic uh, environment where this SDG should be applied. And when you go to that level, I mean, you have 1,000 directions you can take for different SDGs. They seems to be very simple, only 17, but each of them holds a great deal of targets and, and, and indicators that is too complex to be, uh, to be addressed at local level. So that was challenge level number two. Challenge level number three is that Africa has a diversity of challenges. Land use, land degradation, energy supply, used jobs, entrepreneurship, and yes, is trying to address that. Sustainable production, food, technology, gender, etc. So many. But look at this one. When it comes to land challenges, you have so many uh, difficult problems um, related to urbanization, uh, related to coastal energy, flooding, you know, wood energy, erosion, so many problems in land, and yet the land is the basis of the most of these objectives to be addressed, like food security, um, like life in land, and the issue of uh, food, uh, food security, etc. So difficult to, to have transformation in all these um, issues without creating a new science, a new way of doing science to move the agenda forward. Level challenge number four is the issue of the method. So many rhetorics or method or approach have been pitched in the transformation arena. System thinking, multidisciplinarity, transdisciplinarity, the issue of space and scale, participatory, etc. But where are we compared to those? When we talk about system thinking, what, ha what happened is people are selecting the most important aspect to do, and they don't do system thinking. When it comes to multidisciplinarity, people go to issue linkages and trying to simplify the process. When you go to the issue of participation, it's more like panels and science committees. And participation is not as at the level we would expect it to be to move the agenda forward. The issue of holistic approach, head sectors. And my sense is, I don't care about what, what the approach you put in place. What I care about is the process for the outcome. The process of the, for the outcome should be including the local communities working with uh, local, 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 uh, you know, stakeholders to attain one big transformation that speaks to the SDG. What happened is we spend too much time in trying to explain and and and, and nudge down the type of conceptually, you know, sound, uh, uh, you know, uh, paradigm which has no implication really on the practice. And that's really a big issue.
of the child. The labor challenge. Number five could be easily seen in the tension between the rich and the poor. Africa is a Poor country, but then you have so many rich people. Which who does not have the same uh, aspiration with the poor poor communities, and you can see from Lagos to Dakar to Nairobi to Cape Town, a differentiated set of um, uh, actors who, who care about various, various issues. If you go to the poor communities, they they did about informal sector, livelihood challenges, health and safety, inequality, etc. But then you go to the rich community, it's an issue of creating, doing business, um, advancing, you know, technology and developing smart solutions, you know, for production. But both of them have some impact on the environment and we need to, 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 to be very peculiar on ways we address those issues. Now, to address all these challenges, there is not only the SDG framework, but we have other frameworks. Paris Agreement is one, one of them, the Paris Goals. Um, they also want to create transformation, uh, to shift on low carbon development. Um, the whole aim of the Paris Goal is to limit the global warming below two degrees Celsius. And this requires a deep transformation for all countries, such as the SDGs, and there is an overlap between the Paris goal and the SDG on climate change, which are targeting the same kind of uh, objective. Um, so the Paris goal also look for climate resilience, equity and adaptation. But we said yet again, the issue of finance, technology and knowledge is at the kernel of the Paris goal. Beside the Paris goal, um, which which we, we, we try to put here as a, as a very differentiated um, set of uh, possible action where developed countries still pollute much more than developing countries. We need to look at what this declaration says uh, as compared to what, we are, what, what, what our ambitions are. 2030 agenda says that we commit to making fundamental change in the way that our society produces and consume goods and services. And SDGs 12.2 says, achieving the sustainable management and efficiency on natural resource is one of the same. So if you go back to the old Agenda 20, Agenda 21, it was exactly the same thing. So to me, the question we are asking, is it 
anything is there anything new in the SDGs? And if you look carefully, I think there is nothing new in the SDGs. But what will be new is the approach of achieving the goals. The approach of achieving the goals is the only thing which I think is is new in the SDGs, and I will tell you why. Um, in this slide, you will see there is a big up set of overlap between the Paris Agenda, the Agenda 2030, the Bond Challenge on Land Degradation, the IK Target on Biodiversity, the Sunday Framework on Disaster Risk Reduction. So we are, <coughs> excuse me, we are bombarded by global agenda. Everybody puts an agenda on the table. We are bombarded by assessment, global environmental assessment, IP based assessment, IPCC assessment, land degradation assessment, so many set of information, but we are not good enough to create the space of action. And that's where really the frustration comes in when you, when you take the Africa context. And, and the, other challenge, the other problem is those big overarching problems are not connected to the community level. And that's a big issue we are, we are, we are dealing with. I tried to use some statistics uh, from the African Development Bank to understand where we are coming from. And in this particular graph, you have the poverty rate and the urban rural uh, differentiation. So most of the African countries, as you can see, are over 40% of poverty. And rural areas are much poorer than urban areas. So these are the nitty gritty aspects of the problems we need to up to bring up front to address the issue of poverty, not just having a blank blanket solution space where you're saying you, you create business and that that you think that a genuine thing will, will arise and the solution will, will pump out. You need to understand for each country what's the specifics. For each uh, sub-country level, what's the specifics? and go down to the community level. What are the specifics that needs to be addressed? And we, are not, we did not do that work. We, we stay only at the high level. Everybody understands the 17 goals, but nobody you know, created a detailed set of information for the scale on which we should implement the SDGs to understand what's the problem to be addressed. And as long as we don't do that, I don't think we will start solutions um, that speaks to the SDGs and time is running very fast. Look at this, um, the top graph is all about um, the consumption of calories. Africa is the red, is the red um, uh, trend. It's improving, but it's far from the level of the world. And this, the, the graph below is um, the issue of uh, the prevalence of undernourishment. And you can see that undernourishment is quite correlated to poverty level, to GDP. So the issue of poverty is an entry point, but we don't, we just talk about poverty as one general thing. We don't nudge it down, we don't have the details in the ground to see which community is more vulnerable, who, where to act exactly, who to target. And this, this really detailed level is missing on the SDGs. We, we do reporting at very high macro indicators and it does not help too much you know uh, and everybody can put everything he wants i think and that does not move us forward so when when you take these statistics again you can see that africa is improving in some areas um, on the area of services we see the mobile line uh, the mobile telephone uses is increasing at high speed internet also is increasing slightly but still uh, 20 percent of the continent use internet what worries me is the issue of water and electrical, electric supply. Water supply um, is very low first, and then urban areas are better off than rural areas. Same thing with electricity. Electricity comes to um, you know, less than 50% in rural areas, and it can reach about 70, 75% in urban areas. So still the discrepancy between rural and urban, but altogether those services are improving in Africa in a low rate, but yet it's a good signal and we should accelerate that. Um, at the same time, while we are trying to improve, climate is there to cancel our effort. This is a graphic showing the frequency of um, extreme events in, in Africa. Um, 
So drought event, flood event, extreme temperature, storms are coming as a very high level uh, from 2000 to now. And everything we achieve in some areas of development might be cancelled by this extreme weather event. So climate change is really impacting on the development of Africa. And as you all see, the money which is invested to climate change is very low, uh, mostly in terms of adaptation, in terms of loss and damages. There is nothing that people do. We, we, we follow the rhetoric on mitigation, uh, carbon sequestration, and that's where uh, that's not where our priority is. Our priority is to see what are the impact that can have a negative, uh, uh, a negative. Uh, what are the climate impact that have a negative uh, implication on development and address those? And and that's really a big, a big problem. Another way of developing hope is the issues of synergetic approach between SDGs and climate. So when you take the energy and the land process. There are so many synergy between the SDG solutions and the climate solutions. And this is a graphic which has been developed in the IPCC Special Report 1.5 that works on the linkages between mitigation options and sustainable development goals using the SDGs, for instance. All the greenish uh, lines, um, graphic shows the level of confidence where these synergies are, are possible. So taking such a framework and seeing how it applies to the local communities, to the local level, and try to aggregate solution package for the local communities might be something to be explored quite seriously. But we cannot do that if we are not working seriously on the type of science that matters for Africa. Um, the ACR report 2015 and many reports like UNESCO you know, have highlighted the importance of solutions to local issues. And you can see that I'm always coming to solutions to local issues. We go to COPs, we discuss global. We go to meetings at UN, we discuss global. When we come back home, there is nothing relevant for communities. We and the new generation of scientists should be very alert on the solutions to local issues and the outcome and achievement that are relevant to them. And while doing that, my sense is um, we, we have to be careful where the money comes from. As I told you in the beginning, uh, doing research in Senegal for, for 11 years, I never had any funding coming from the government. I always had funding coming from Dadiga, from IDRC, from all the donors. And yet, all the reporting I'm doing in science is going to those countries. I've never reported my science to the Ministry of Environment or the Ministry of Education. So this is one thing. The other thing is, when the money comes in, where are the priorities? We, ha we, we, are, we was used to invest on areas where our scientific interest is, not necessarily where the community interest is. And that's why we have a kind of, uh, you know, uh, separation between the science we do and the priorities of the society. And that needs to be addressed. The other thing which needs to be addressed is, the importance of negotiating various priorities with communities. Um, we, we had the challenge for instance, going to one community. Um, some people was interested on clean water and also was interested on, on, on improving yield. So negotiating the tension between the aspirations of communities is something extremely useful when it comes to SDGs. So that requires a lot of um, uh, legitimacy assessment. and requirement for research actions on the actors that we need to 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 take care of <sighs> so when we look forward uh, for the brighter future um, i can see that many countries have improved their level of funding of research and this report from unesco shows that the ratio between uh, research and development to the gdp has slightly improved in different countries. But in terms of absolute value, um, the, the money which is invested to research is really, really low, it's still uh, around 1% of the GDP target. Uh, the average of investment is 0 0.4. And we don't have enough money, we don't have enough domestic funding from our countries 
to address all the level of challenge we are talking about. Development is local. Adaptation is local. Uh, and we don't have money to do that. Uh, how can we do that in 11 years and achieve the SDGs? I'm really doubtful that we will arrive, we will arrive to, the, to the goals in, 20, in 2030 because the countries are not investing in that. Um, opportunities and signs of optimism, um, that's the level of policy implications and engagement for, for science. Um, in African Union, there is a plan of action uh, which has been established on science and technology. Um, there is another document which has been established at high levels, the Science and Technology Initiative Strategy for Africa. And there is a new institution which is established in Kigali, Kigali which is the SDG Center for Africa, to coordinate actions between countries. And the SDG Center for Africa is dealing a lot with the scientists. They have the ambition to connect 50 universities around the SDGs. But we're losing time. We started in 2015, it's 2019, four years are gone and I haven't seen anything real in the continent to create transformation. Um, another positive sign is the increment in the, in the investment between 2007 and 2013 on research development by 55%. And the number of publications from African scientists is rising also to a rate which is quite uh, positive. But all that should be reconnected again to the domestic problems, to the local problems, not being driven or invited, uh, not being driven by the global uh, agenda itself, but driven by the domestic requirement of development. We should be realistic about what, how we can accelerate innovation at various scale. Um, NIPAD has developed the Alliance of, for Accelerating Excellence in Science in Africa, but I'm sure a little, rate, um, a little number of, of young scientists know about that alliance. Africa science uh, needs a lot of money. We are investing few millions but what we need is more than 200 billion to be invested into science to create transformation. We buy the technology very expensive. We are not investing as Korea did or China or Japan too much into innovation. And we are, we are totally doomed uh, for the time being because there is no resources to do research. Um, and this will be justified by many uh, you know, uh, requirements for SDGs and as you know, um, we, we can't just move forward uh, without having any, any research funding. So I, I might be very cynical uh, or very negative here, but achieving SDGs is not just like a lip service. We need to transform the way we do science. So resource mobilization, countries like Ethiopia, Kenya, and other countries, Rwanda, are doing a lot in, in advancing investment. But there are very few examples among the 54, 55 countries in Africa. Uh, some countries are tapping in private sector, uh, such as South Africa and Namibia. And, and Africa has a lot of billionaires names, uh, like Dangote, and the philanthropy money is there. So how can we tap in all these resources to advance science? So we need support from the government level. We need support from the high education level. And we did not start on the right place looking for resources and creating the critical mass of scientists to create transformation. Things that might help us uh, quickly in advancing the agenda is to uh, work on trans using transdisciplinarity processes as a new way of doing science. Um, until now, um, people of our generation, we was all lab-oriented specifics uh, of science driven by laboratory analysis. But now the new pace of doing science is connecting the societal, the societal practice with the scientist, scientific practice and understand together the problems and framing the team building, co-creation of solutions and integration of applications for the local communities. So the transdisciplinarity is oriented to practice, it's oriented to solutions, and I think that's the way we should go forward. It's a very slow process indeed, and we have to check whether it's the best way to accelerate transformation in, in Africa. And here is the same graphic showing how we can create a, a flow of information between actions and the available knowledge developed by the scientists, developing a common vision 
and at associating policies, science, researchers, business, and wider society in the way we do science and we translate science. So for the YES community, what I would see is a three levels of um, implications um, for the SDGs. The three level of implications are, first, the, the need of discovery. We need to create information that address the local issues um, based on the different drivers of societal problems, the different states and trends we need to address, the difference of the different level of critical areas we need to, to take care of. So fundamental research is needed because we don't have enough elements of discovery in our society to, to create solutions that goes uh, to, to the SDGs um, as solution space. Um, the second level, which is connected to the first one, is the issue of innovation. You know, innovation is a connection between different uh, discoveries. Thank you. Um, if you take your cell phone or your smartphone, it's a connection of various discoveries, yeah. uh, internet uh, discovery. Thank you very or, much, you know, Dr. Imbu, for this brilliant presentation. Discoveries uh, to create innovation. Uh, the topic to create is innovation, very important. The, the best way to address SDGs is to move it forward to transformation. That's a scaling up. So everything comes from the ground, comes from the local, comes from the basis of transformation. You cannot just trans create transformation on the top level. Transformation should start from the bottom level. That's really the message which I wanted to say because all the problems which have which have described it in the in the presentation, all those problems are local. But the debate and the discussions um, are intellectually oriented and and they are global. So we need to crack down those problems and bring it back to the local issues and see how much of those solutions we can aggregate uh, at local level to create an overall transformation and a general uh, solution space for, for the SDGs. Important uh, and very linked to our future in the continent. So While we try to focus uh, on transformation, points where we very have relevant to orient it to, to local and what we as early career scientists, scientists Need to focus on and is, um, uh, can I ask you a question? Uh, I'm Rondro from the Yes Community. So, uh, thanks questions. very much for a very interesting talk. And um, I really um, like the attendee here. Have been is there any questions on what Dr. Imbo's presentation? In the, SDGs is the, way you connect the, the way you put it when you say that, um, to do that for the SDGs, there are these are goals, but there are many approaches to tackle them. Okay. And um, I, my question is like, do you think Africa... Goals. We cannot rely on the agenda driven by others. We have to create a local, a domestic process of, 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 of funding science and addressing local problems. The, the elements of the SDGs to me are not enough to create transformation in Africa in general. And there is one thing which I call the missing SDGs. Um, for us, the armed conflict, the issue of migration in the Sahel, or the global equity in Africa are something which are not reflected so much in the SDGs. And how do we see that SDGs is not just the space that create all the positive change that we need for Africa? There are other things which are so important for Africa, but is not reflected on the SDGs. And the last one is the issue of complexity. Africa has so many priorities, has so many systems and ecologies, so many power relationships that try to just address SDGs using simple process will not have to address the local issue. So, um, the elements which I wanted to, to say with my brain very slow today, uh, with my voice broken um, because of a very serious flu, I'm still struggling with, I'm sweating right now where I am to talk. And people who know me may, may realize that this is not the style of my presentation, it's more Russia. And, uh, and I'm very sorry for that, but I decided to keep going and counseling this one for the few people who was expecting me to say something about the SDG. Um, I thank you very much, and um, uh, I'm looking forward to interactions on two areas, mostly the local orientation 
or the bottom up approach uh, the you know impact oriented research that we need yes. for the continent for the yeah, yeah from, from this side or you'll start from the other side uh, the flow uh, for organizing the discussion is pretty for raw online and thank you for for for, for your attention uh, I'm looking forward to your comments and suggestions. Oh, thank you so much, um, Rondo. Um, this is this is a great question. So you see, the way you put they put the SDGs is made in a way that everybody will find it relevant for his own country. But if you say, for instance, to reduce poverty or zero poverty for all, and you go down to the indicators and target, you have detailed aspects of the SDGs that SDGs that speaks to all countries mostly. But when it comes to the solution, that's where the problem is. When it comes to the solution, the, the diversity of solutions we have uh, for Germany or for France or for United States is different from the situation in Africa. So when thinking about the SDGs, the goal is there, but the method to, to reach that goal is not clear now. It's not clear what science, what information, what transformation should be put in place. The countries in Africa are doing the same development approach, uh, which is different from what we really need to reach the goals. So the goals are there, and it's, it's, it's totally OK. Everybody can say, OK, I need health, I need water, I need biodiversity. Everybody can say yes for all the goals. But if you come to Africa and say, ask a country, how would you reach? a better life on Earth or a better life on ocean um, using a different way of development, they don't give you the solution. The example I can give you is the fishery. If you go to West Africa, we still have a great deal of contracts of fishermen coming from Spain, from Japan, from Europe. They're taking the fish away. So there is no new approaches of creating stability in the resources in our country. They do the same thing, but yet Hello. And my, my okay, yeah, my name is Dari. One thing is to say yes. I'm a student here in Paris. I have two questions. You would establish Number one is about funding research in Africa. You showed us the statistics that even though most African countries have tried to even have a one percent of their budget for research, but up to now most of them are not even able to reach the one percent. So first question is that how can Africa found research that can lead to innovative ideas? And the second question is that in Africa we find out that most youth and even young students they come out 
with innovative ideas that can lead to achieving SDG. But most unfortunately, most times these people are not being supported such that their ideas can get all over to the world. Thank you. This is this is exactly uh, Derek. This is exactly the type of issues which I was talking about. One thing is to set the goal. The other thing is to think about ways to create transformation. You cannot create transformation if you don't invest invest enough on into research. And as you rightly say, one percent of the GDP was the target, and the average in Africa is zero point four percent for for investing uh, as an investment in research. So we are very far away. And I actually, I think 1% is still very low. Uh, you know South Korea, you know South Korea to reach the level they are in innovation and technology. They invested 5 to 6% of their GDP in South Korea. And during independence time in the 60s, Africa was in the same level as South Korea. Now we are importing technology from South Korea. And there are many examples like that in Malaysia, etc. I think it's not even ambitious to have 1% of GDP. We should say 5% of the GDP to take the profit of the demographic dividend, which is the use. We, we have a population of 40% of, of young generation, 40% of, of, uh, uh, of, the, of the population in Africa are, 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 are young generation. And yet we are not investing too much on their brains and the way we can use them to be creative. And that speaks to your second question, that although people are very creative, they don't have support. Listen, to me, to have the support, you need a framework and an institutional framework to be created. There is no framework for innovation in Africa for the young generation. People are building universities, uh, creating schools, and training. But the framework for Okay, thank you for that. Okay, just uh, on to probably another question, but uh, still similar to that, uh, uh, is that you find that uh, we have many researchers, especially like uh, people at our level, students who are doing uh, a lot of research, lots of publications have been made, but if you look at the impact of these publications on uh, on the society. There is very little you can say about them. Most uh, researchers and academicians mostly focus on just doing publications and so on, but they don't really concentrate on how these publications and this research they're doing will uh, impact on the society. So what can we do as uh, researchers to improve on how we are going to make our research impact on the society upon public, uh, doing the publications or so on. And uh, secondly is about uh, the political will in terms of uh, one, funding the research, increasing the, the funding in research, and two, also ensuring that we achieve these sustainable goals, sustainable development goals. So you find that there are a lot of things that our governments and the, poli the, political, uh, <coughs> the political management tries to do, but you find that there are things that affect the people, especially the, when you talk about the rich and the poor. 
So things that affect the poor that we don't see them really focusing on, and they are the most pressing things that should be done by our politicians. So what what is it that we can uh, we as a people can do or can a way to help in such a, a case? Okay, my name is Brian. Thank you. What's your name? Brian, okay. So thank you, Brian, uh, for these two questions. Um, Brian, you, you touched on an issue which I've been trying to flag in different conferences, where I was talking about moving from impact factor to impact actors. Impact factor is the way we have been evaluated in science where publishing in nature and global change biology was the most um, rewarding for us like scientists in universities um, to move forward from assistant to school professor. But then we did not care too much. And everything we did in science was like, you know, wrapping a paper and throwing it over in the society and hope, expect somebody to use it. So now what we need to change, and I, and I, and I come back to the change in the approach, is to, to go from impact actor to, to go from impact factor to the impact of the actors, and put it as a as an indicators of as an indicator of the evaluation of scientists. If a scientist in Africa is evaluated on the way he transforms society, he creates innovation. And again, we should create a framework for that. There is there is no discussions of space where the Ministry of Higher Education, um, the Ministry of Research. Uh, the Ministry of Agriculture, the Ministry of Science and Technology. They work together to create a framework which is, uh, which is transversal to help all the students who have something that has some impact on the actors to be promoted. There's no such a thing. After we finish our PhD or finish our master's, there's no translation uh, of knowledge to society. That's the problem. I did so many algorithms and so many solutions for bushfires, or carbon sequestration. But if you don't translate that knowledge to, to communities to, for various problems, then I think the science will remain at the university. And actually, we are discussing with UNESCO, how do we create a bottom-up approach where this science can be taken to the society? And there is a lot on that. And again, it's an issue of how we do science as scientists, but it's also the way the science policy is implemented in Africa. And I, and I think it's a huge problem. Uh, it's not just by talking about it we will solve it. We have to recreate a new framework, a new space for connecting science to society. So one thing I would like you to retain, move away from impact factor to embrace impact actor. The second point is the issue of political will and the SDGs. As you rightly mentioned, if we don't deal and tackle the local problems, SDGs will never we attain actually in Africa. We come from far away and the mountain to claim is so steep. So my 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 take, my response to that is let's localize, let's localize SDGs. If you don't localize SDGs and we put it on the air, the solution is on the ground, then we would never, never attain the objective. 
So many issues are there, intellectually sound. We, we, we talk about Paris Framework to take the Celsius. We talk about IQ target on biodiversity. But then the solution is on the ground. How do we localize that? By, by engaging these communities, by, by identifying the local priorities which are needed and get the support from the local governance and the local policymakers to create a bottom-up approach that resolves the problems, then we are not, we are not, um, we are not, we are not getting to the best uh, um, space uh, for this SDG. So my my response to your question number two is: How do we localize SDGs? Thank you very much. How we move from global uh, debate to yes. local solution? That's where you would see transformation happening to people, and yes. how when we get uh, innovation and transformation. We make sure that we have pathways and framework to scale it up to people, for people to use it. And there are so many solutions in agriculture, in, in technology. Every country creates so many apps, you know, with, with cell phones. But people do not care. They just wait for the pathway defined by developed countries, which does not always uh, suit our needs in Africa. And as long as we continue to that path, we will just not move forward. Um, Korea is a good example. So they really develop innovations that suit their need and they end up having deep transformation uh, for their country. So my question is, if we have to create a space where science and policymakers can have an interface and discuss those problems. That's a very good question, Rondro, and I had been having this tension uh, as I was a young scientist to be to have the recognition and to grow in my career and at the same time to do useful research. And that's where I try to say uh, that we need to change the criteria. As long as the criteria is to, uh, to, to become a full professor if we publish in Nature, then we would, we would continue the same way of doing science without really having implications on, on society. Look, let me take the case of the United States, which science have created a lot of transformation. The people who was guiding science are the private is the end of business sector. If you take Amazon or if you take any of these big institutions, they invested in Silicon Valley a lot of money in MIT, in Stanford University, etc., in Michigan State University for the agriculture. And when investing, they're looking for research that have impact on on the development of things they can scale up. Um, you know, you know, fighting some diseases on maize, we, that was something that was discovered in Michigan State University. And they bring it back to society and the farmers who invested into that research they use it. But do we have that interface where uh, the, the fabric of milk in, in your country has come to university or the farmers of tomato have come to the university and say, we have $1 million. We need to solve the problem of the diseases of the tomato production. It does not happen in Africa. It does not also happen that any ministry who wants to create innovation on agriculture or technology come to university or research centers and give $1 million to them to create solutions for uh, their problems. And in developed countries, that is what is happening. The linkage between the private sector and the public sector with the research is something we haven't been creating in Africa. 
Dr. Mbo, there is another question from Omar. Omar Farouk, uh, Omar Farouk is online and uh, is asking the question to know how to prevent the privatization. I'm going to read the question. He said, uh, how privatization of, of some key public sectors in Africa can help achieve the SDGs at the local level. He continues saying, what strategies to put in place? I repeat the question. How privatization of some key public sectors in Africa can help to achieve the SDGs at the local level? And what are the strategies to put in place? New practical solutions in science as a way to evaluate. And another way is to create the bridge between science and policymakers, science and, and, and business. Sorry. Omar, yes. Uh, yeah, thank you, jean -Pierre. Thank you, uh, Antonio. Uh, I'm glad to come to the end of the webinar and uh, that was really rich and fruitful discussion. I fully agree on what has been saying in the presentation of the role of the early career scientists to drive a change on the continent, which I really believe in. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Dr. Imbo. I thank you very much for the brilliant presentation oh, so and um, for accepting the invitation to join us today. Uh, um, I also would like know, to, to government thank government the students, the attendees for the great um, discussion the organizing team for the hard work and making this effort of, uh, a real branding. success. Um, uh, the, the record and the report uh, about to to, uh, the uh, webinar of today will be shared on the uh, event uh, web page uh, and also on NET and Paul's uh, website and social media sector. channels. Uh, I also Such take the opportunity uh, the to announce the space, next webinar, the, the fourth one, uh, uh, will be next month and will be given system. by creating Professor Jenny Tumor from the University the of system. South Africa. We create a creative environment where people will be so creative that they will bring new solutions that the public sector will not be able to bring because they will follow a policy plan, they will follow, you know, rigid framework. And without changing uh, this rigidity, which is rigidity in, in the public uh, sector, achieving SDG will be problematic. We need a lot of flexibility. Uh, so a of just management. a small reminder about a lot of different pathways of addressing issues. Thank you very much. Well, so we are running out on the extra units. So I'm going to give the floor to the COP, the community of practice for the closing words and the side of powers before giving the floor to Fatem. All right. Um, uh, Dr. Uh, Mbo, we are so grateful and very happy for the uh, valuable time that you've given to us this uh, afternoon. Um, you've really taken us through um, the knowledge that we need to learn for us to get to achieve the sustainable development goals. Um, uh, the, the, uh, on, on behalf of the power side, we are so thankful. Uh, our attendees, both uh, physical and online, I think they have at least gained. They have not remained the same uh, the, uh, one hour before we started. So uh, we are so generally thankful for all, mostly for the time that you've given us. And we hope that we shall uh, keep sharing and learning more from you, Doctor. We are really thankful. Yes, Fatih.